Now that you know what to put on a resume to make a hit with employers, I'm going to tell you what you should leave off the resume. Six elements that will doom it to failure. Even if you're responding to an ad that specifically asked for this information, don't include it. If your expectations or salary history are too high, a prospective employer will weed you out right from the start. If they're too low, you've lost your bargaining power. Or worse, you'll be hired for possibly thousands less than what you're worth. It's a no-win situation. Remember, it's always best to discuss salary requirements after an offer has been made. Personal data. It's a waste of prime resume real estate. No employer will make the interview call based on your age, marital status, or excellent health. If your excellent health is directly related to the position you're seeking, maybe a warehouse job where you have to lift heavy objects, the time to bring that up is in the interview. We might like to think that there are enough legal protections against discrimination that disclosing personal information, such as age and marital status, would not be an issue. But unfortunately, we would just be fooling ourselves. The only time that including hobbies or personal interests on a resume is a good idea is when your interests are relevant to the position for which you're applying. For the most part, you can cover this in the actual interview. These never count in your favor. If you left a job involuntarily, that's a strike against you. Laid off always sounds a bit like fired to some employers. If you left voluntarily, that's also a strike against you. Maybe the employer thinks mm, he won't stick with this job either. The best strategy is to never raise the issue. In some organizations, putting your picture on a resume eliminates it automatically. These organizations want to avoid exposure to possible discrimination complaints. Discrimination protections notwithstanding, pictures simply give employers another reason to reject your resume. If they don't like your looks, if they think you look too young, too old, too fat, too thin, too good looking, not good looking enough, or whatever, your resume may get tossed out unread. You want to be judged on the basis of your talents and qualifications, not on your looks. So never include a picture. Now, models and performing artists are the exception to this rule, since their appearance is one of their qualifications for some jobs. However, they generally submit 8 by 10 photos separately, not on the resume itself. Eye candy comes in two flavors, and both fatten up a resume without adding muscle. The first is cute graphics. On a resume, these immediately send the message that you are not to be taken seriously. Plus, they divert the employer's attention from your achievements and qualifications. I once received a resume from a woman named Candy Cane, K-A-Y-N. <laughs> Trying to capitalize on the cuteness of her name, she stuck Candy Cane graphics all over her resume. Within seconds, that resume was in the trash. The second type of eye candy are the infographics you'll see advertised on the internet. They're popular with graphic designers, but they're heavily sold to applicants from all fields. For example, here are excerpts from an infographic recommendation for Asian job applicants. Much of this is misinformation. First, no resume will ever get you a job. The purpose of a resume is to get you an interview. Second, the idea of using progress bars to show your proficiencies in particular skills is complete fluff. Your claims mean nothing without concrete evidence to back them up. Third, the when in doubt box has four typos in it, even though one of its callouts is to proofread in order to avoid typos. If you think I just cherry picked a bad example, take a look at this. Again, three glaring flaws jump out that would put this resume in the trash. First, squandering the resume real estate like this raises serious questions about the candidate's ability to prioritize. Second,
there's a fatal spelling mistake in work experience on the left. The candidate might claim attention to detail, <laughs> but his resume proves the claim to be empty. Then there's the skills chart again on the right. I want to emphasize that these so-called proficiency scales represent what Edward Tufta calls chart junk. Tufta is a professor emeritus at Yale University. He's noted for his writings on information design. He's a pioneer in the field of data visualization. All four of these books are beautiful examples. And Tufta rails against the kind of chart junk found in newspapers like USA Today the kind of chart junk that these so-called proficiency scales represent. The problem is they don't communicate anything of value to a hiring manager. The candidate we just looked at claims five-star proficiency in project management, but he can't even produce an error-free resume. A professional's reaction to these scales is, oh yeah, prove it. If you really have five-star skills, then prove it with strong accomplishments that provide solid evidence. Otherwise, the claims just read as empty puffery. The principle at work here is simple. Put nothing on your resume that doesn't help you get an interview. Put nothing on your resume that gives a reviewer a reason to reject you. Even if you're a graphic designer who wants to show off your skills, leave the infographics for your portfolio. Keep them out of your resume unless what you're interested in is impressing your friends instead of the hiring manager. And while we're looking at what you should never put on your resume, let's take a look at other common mistakes that will doom your resume to the digital trash can or to the real thing. Your ability to follow instructions speaks to your attention to detail. Follow instructions about who to address the resume to if the contact name should be in the subject line, don't forget it. If the instructions call for the resume to be incorporated into the email, don't send it as an attachment. It seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how many candidates forget to include their contact information when submitting a resume online. Or perhaps the candidate was in such a rush, he or she simply forgot to include anything in the subject line. Now, this submission might not even make it past the organization's spam filter. Failure to reference the job or position you're applying for guarantees that you won't be considered for it. Now, I hope you're laughing out there and thinking to yourself, how clueless could these people be? Then you will be sure not to make any of the same mistakes. Let's look next at the biggest hard copy resume mistakes. Do not fold the resume. Send it in an envelope that will allow it to be transmitted unfolded. In the US, that means a 9 by 12 envelope for a standard 8.5 by 11 inch resume. Similarly, do not use staples. Remember, a paper resume will probably be fed into a scanner. If the recipient has to remove staples, your resume may end up in the trash. Don't put your resume in some sort of binder. This will most often work against you because your resume does not fit easily into the file or pile of other resumes and it becomes misplaced. Errors of any sort, from insufficient postage to an incorrect address, contact, or department, to misspellings in the resume. Any errors make you look bad. Think about the resume you just saw. His misspelling the word experience gave the lie to his entire resume. Finally, don't use odd-sized paper, meaning paper other than 8.5 by 11 in the U.S. or A4 in Europe. Make sure the paper used for your cover letter is the same as that used for your resume. Do not use personal or decorative stationery for either one. There you have it, mistakes that have been made by many, many candidates before you. Avoid these and your resume will have a better chance of doing what it's intended to do, getting you an interview.